Good evening everyone. Today I'm going to do a video about advice for investors. I wrote this article about three, four years ago, so there's probably a few points in there that's specific to Bataya, but a lot of um, the stuff you can use in general. I'll point out a few things that maybe I don't agree with so much. This is a bit over the top. There's a lot of other factors involved. A few of the factors at the end and strictly um, are more like you know getting the contract right when you get an investor on board or a partner you need, need to make sure your expectations are set in a contract so you've got the legal contract and then you've got you know the operation contract where you're putting each other's roles down so um it's very difficult to match up it, investors and um and business guys especially in bataya and there's a lot of um guys that just um talk talk nonsense all the time um, I see a lot of guys investing in people from their hometown or their home country in Thailand they just feel safer they drop their guard and more things happen I've seen this um, countless times all my all my uh, investors which uh, from the past when I started Nightwish group they're all from different countries um, Sweden America Canada Australia um, and then my dad and America I'm not sure if I said that one yeah so they're all different type of pe they're all different types of people and he invested with me because of me not because I was English um, I see so many guys getting ripped off with people from their hometown just because he's from your hometown doesn't mean that he can trust you and, and these are friends like from school as well so I've seen that before um, I've seen many people turn bad, I've seen um, and I can see the future quite often with people. I've made, this, I've made this video to help people out, to stop them from getting robbed. Oh yesterday there was um, someone said that someone called me Floris Gump, I thought that was a very good video considered, um, name, I might use that later on, I thought that was quite funny. Um, so these, these are the things you should ask yourself to reduce the chances of losing money. It's quite comprehensive, so you don't have to be completely bonkers over it. One, how many years has the person lived here for? If you're going to invest with someone that's been here five minutes, you know, they've got too many challenges ahead. There's a very big learning curve in Bataya and Thailand. Like in Bataya, there's a lot of bars. People like to party. You've got, they've got to be through all, all of that and get out of their system already. The reason why I don't get managers from England that have never been to Pattaya is because when they come here, they've got to face everything. They've got to face the potential addictions, the girls, the expenses, the learning curves. And I just don't want to be part of that because that, that's, that's when they're going to fail. You need to get past that first. Two, what, may, what motivates them? I find people with children are much more motivated and much more serious because they don't want to lose their job, they want to stay and they work harder. But at the same time, there's guys here that are addicted to pussy, there's guys that are addicted to, you know, maybe some expensive hobby and that works out well. But obviously, nights out and drugs um, isn't something good that they should be addicted to. Number three, do they have a criminal record back home? You can actually check... Um, you can actually do checks on this. I, I don't know anyone that has ever checked anyone here. There's a couple of guys, and if you found out their real names here, um, you would be surprised. Four, do you actually know any of their real family? Are they from where they really are? Do they have any friends that can verify it? There's so many guys here with no, no um, friends or family, and it's very suspicious. You look on their Facebook and they've got no one on there. They don't have any daughters or friends or family from back home commenting. They've either burnt bridges, which is a bad sign, or they are, um, or they're lying about their past, or they, you know, they they just um, they they're saying that their name's something completely different, and maybe that's the second Facebook. Five. How much money do they have, and why don't they have any? If the, a lot of these guys say, I need investments because I don't have any money. Well, why has he got no money? Is he overspending? Is he going to overspend your money? Is he spending on drugs? Is he controlled by a woman? Why has he got no money? Some guys say to me, oh yeah, but they can't fulfill big orders. But, what you know, have a look into what's going on. 
that there could be um, there could be a genuine reason there. A lot of guys come here and they've got no money, older guys, and there could be a genuine reason, like maybe he lost his job, maybe it's medical expenses. Most of the guys here say they've had a divorce. I think some guys here have never had money and they just say they lost it in divorce, but there's a lot of guys that have lost all their money in divorce, they say. So um, it's very hard to tell, but it, that maybe they're unsuccessful and they're just pretending that they were rich before. Number six, how much money will they put in? If they aren't willing to put any money in, maybe they don't have any confidence. If you want 10 million baht of someone and they won't put 1 million in as an, as an act, you know, they've got some skin in the grain, in the, in the game, then maybe they don't want to, um, maybe they don't have faith for themselves. Maybe they just, um, maybe there's other reasons. I would say put some money in yourself to, to show that you have confidence in what you're doing and you're going to, you're going to put your neck on the line. Um, I've seen a lot of guys here doing very crazy things with investments money and I think it's a gamble. I wouldn't do anything like that. If I was going to take an investor on board, it would be for something safe and steady. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to gamble with my own money. I can sleep at night then. Um, nine. When I said gamble then, I, I actually mean um, take a risk, that an unproven track. So if I'm going to open a nightclub, that's an unproven track. I have faith in myself to put the right team together and to get the right knowledge, but that's more of a gamble than if I got an investor for a bar with the same systems I had that, had, that we have already. Seven, this is the biggest warning sign ever. Is he out buying ringing bells? Is he trying to be the big man around town? Is he out buying shots? These are all the hallmarks of um, the most, most of the guys I've seen. I've seen loads of guys um, with huge bar bills and, and just um, using investment and investors' money. You should put 100% of investment um, money into the business. When we've had it in the past, we've renovated and we've um, bought more bars. And there was only one occasion when we put some money into our pockets. And out of all six occasions, it, was, it just happened at one time. And it wasn't a lot of money at all, but there was reasons for that because one, one of our partners needed some money. If someone's, um, yeah, if someone lives like hanging bells and, you know, shagging three gills at a time, they're not going to stop because it's your money. I, I could be wrong here with some people, but I haven't met anyone yet. There's going to be a lot of guys saying, well, I'm not like that. Um, you know, there, there, there are guys out there that are not like that. I mean, I spend money on... Um, a nice car and we've got this house here but we've got an office here too for the Bataille News and also I've got a family and it's just nice to have a house and I spend all my time in the, in the um, house also so instead of going out drinking and partying and stuff you know I spent a little bit extra on the house. Um, number eight, never hand over all the investment. Um, everyone did this for me uh, yeah, everyone did that for me, but I'm established and I already had the bars lined up. You need to control and drip the money for them. When they need something, you need you can pay them. Don't accept excuses. I, I, a guy said to my mate, I need money for um, a machine to bring my production forward. And he gave him the money. And then I, I found out from a money lender that this guy, the money lender, got paid back. And... Um, it was a weird conversation. So my mate lent some, my mate invested with someone and he said, I need 500,000 immediately to build a production fast. And I was talking to a money lender in um, Bataya and he said that he, someone paid him back 500,000 like a month ago. And I said, wait a minute, was that such and such? And he was like, yeah. I said, wow. So. He's using my, my friend's investment money to pay debts off. And I said, to, I said to the guy, why are you paying debts off with my friend's investment money? You never said that. Oh, well, you know, he, he never asked. And I said, you should be transparent when someone's putting some money in. You, you shouldn't lie like that. And that was the first sign that he was just um, going to be completely on the rob. And then he was buying rounds of drinks and um, taking drugs and... 
my friend's money, um, three million baht, went very fast. Um, yeah, so don't hand over all the investment, hand it over bit by bit and pay directly. If someone's buying something, then, then maybe buy it for them. Nine, ask around the guy's reputation. Many of his friends will actually tell you the strengths and weaknesses. There's a lot of people out there that will be honest about people. Oh, this guy, I like him, but um, I wouldn't trust him. You know, he talks a lot of crap. These are the things that you'll be wanting to hear. There's a lot of guys out there that will give you um, very solid information for free. And we all have mutual friends here. Ten, you, I, I find you need to figure out their train of thought to see if it's a successful type of person or if someone that's going to lose a lot of cash. Now, if it's a long-term thinking person that's looking at the future, reinvesting money and all these other things, then, you know, that's a solid investment. If he's saying, oh yeah, let's get this and we'll buy some Lambos, then he needs to grow up a little bit. So, so I'm not saying everyone, um, I'm not saying everyone needs to have the successful mind, mindset because some people are in the earlier stages of being successful and they, they just need a little bit of training, but you're looking at weighing up the risk here. Some, some people don't have that long-term mindset and you really need that. 11, they need to be self-motivated and not lazy. I, I've had guys admit to me that they're lazy and then I've noticed that, that they are completely lazy and, and I find that amazing. But <coughs> there's a lot of guys out there that aren't self-motivated. Guys say to me that they've got managerial experience and they can do this and that and then they, they can't delegate and then they, you've got to constantly remind them um, what needs to in. So it kind of feels like the whole point of being a manager is being self-motivated and getting your team going and then you've got to do that for them. So, um, number 12, um, maybe test them for drugs. A lot of people don't do this. Don't be shy about it. If you're going to give them loads of cash, just tell him, I'm happy to take drugs test. 13, they should be com compliant with whatever contracts your lawyer advises on. Um, if they're making excuses, don't do it. Make sure you have a rock solid contract. You know where the law firm is. You've got it translated in both languages. You use your own lawyer, not his, because I've seen people use the other person's lawyer only. And there was a guy, he had a problem with um, a contract he showed me, it was in English. He didn't know what law firm, what law firm they used because it was the other person's law firm. The whole thing was a joke, you know, it was just, um, you should always have it in Thai and English. Some people say that the English is no good. Um, you really, really need it in Thai because when if you go to court and everything else, they're, they're going to look at the Thai version. It helps a lot. Sure, have a very good translation in English, but always get it in Thai. A lot of guys, I've seen um, contracts written on bar, uh, bar bill uh, paper. It's ridiculous. So... Um, yeah, there's nothing more powerful than the full force of law. People, people think, well, I, I'll, I'll, sh I'll shake his hand, and then if he if he screws me over, I'll, I'll, I'll do him over. But in reality, you're not you're not going to do anyone over here. It's just um, it's just not like the way people think it is. Number fourteen, go with your gut instinct. If it feels wrong, don't do it. My wife has told me countless times this guy is bad and. The, you know, for whatever reason, I'm talked into something, and then it turns out that I've been dealing with a waste of space. So my wife has a, a new role to see um, what people are like, and our gut instinct is is right quite often. I never, I would, I would disagree with that a couple of years ago, maybe five years ago, but now I I agree with it more and more. Fifteen, try and be around and have regular meetings. If he's avoiding you, it's for a reason. If my friend had um, asked for regular expenditure meetings, you know, he wasn't an experienced investor, then maybe he would have been able to find what was happening early on. 16, ask for daily, the daily sales to be emailed to you. Now, if you get a computerized email sent to you, and then you can work a few things out yourself. Go through the whole business plan. Is the rent right? Can he... Can you get the staff? Does he have a crazy wife that's going to screw it all, all up? 
Is it legal? Do they need licenses? Look for any flaws. Seek, seek advice off others. 18. Visit his house. As, is he settled in? Has he just got here? Is it fully furnished? Does he have a dog? Does he have kids? Does he have things? Does he have cars? Is he real? Is that really his name? Have you seen his passport? Um, I said to a guy once, he was really annoying me because he was using a fake name. I says, until I'm sitting with you in your house having a cup of tea, I won't even consider it. He didn't want me to go around his house because he was a scammer. 19. Has he parted out? I'm not against guys having a good time and, you know, having a drink. But if it's every night, you've got to forget it. Um, when I was working hard at the start here, in a, working hard in a different way because I had no money, I was going out once or twice a week. So I'm not totally against people to drink. I'm just saying, like, if he's got over his honeymoon period yet, when you live to retire, his balls to the walls get completely trashed and have a good time. Despite what someone thinks in my comment the other day, I was only going out once or twice a week. I wasn't going out getting completely wrecked. Um, I, a lot of guys get out of party mode after one or two years, but I've seen guys go into party mode um, for forever, you know, and five, ten years until until um, their health um, has a has a, a big hit, and then they have a warning, and then they stop or they slow down. And the other trick in Bataille is if you just stay away from uh, spirits and just stick to the beer, your life will be a lot easier. Twenty. No secrets between business partners. I once did a see. I once did a um, contract with someone. And then the minute I signed it, they said, oh, by the way, um, this investor thinks that the rent's paid for a year because I've, um, I've got money off him and we, I told him we paid the rent, but they kept the money. So I knew immediately that I was going to get screwed. And then there was just more and more secrets between everyone. I just said, this is ridiculous. So that means that, the, that I'm, I'm involved in a scam. And that means that I'm getting scammed too because there'll be secrets against me too. So yeah, that's bad. Um, number 21, if you're cheeky enough, you can suggest you have a stupid friend uh, with loads of money and he could invest and we can push him out, rip him out, rip him off. If he agrees to this, then he's not a guy to, tr not a guy to trust. I wrote this because if you want to trick someone, you can... If you really, really want to get to know someone, you can say, you know, look, I've got a friend, he's got loads of money, let's get him roped in, and then let's um, screw him over. And if they agree to that, then that's, then, then that's not the sort of guy you want to invest in. Because, you know, you're looking at, a lot of these um, scammers will give things away. They'll admit to things, or they'll come up with these ideas, and then they'll just say they're joking. Number 22, so many guys have been ripped off, knew that their business partners ripped people off before. So a friend of mine invested with a guy and the guy started speaking about knocking a business partner off. And then this was in Bataille. And then he, he was taking the other business partner to court. And um, my friend... Hello everyone. I was just making that last video and my phone overheated. And now I'm just driving to Soy 6, even though the bars are closed and it's raining. So what I was saying on the last point is that lots of guys have been ripped off but they, they seen that their partners have had a history and of course the partners always say it wasn't my fault. So a friend of mine invested with a guy and the guy started saying, you know, he wants to get another, another investor knocked off or another partner. And he was just like, you know, we're, we're taking the guy to court, you're gonna win. Why are you gonna knock him off for? But what my friend didn't realize um, it was going to be his turn next because I said to him you went to court and helped this guy rip off the other guy and he was just like yeah but I didn't think it was going to be me I said well you know that's karma for you really but you didn't think it was going to be me um, all of these loose cannons that I see around attacking people I know for a fact it's your turn at some point so I'm wise enough to stay away from people Sometimes I say, well, that guy's he's ripped people off. But no, he's not going to rip me off. I'm completely different. Believe me, I've had guys trying to screw me over 50,000 baht. And I thought that maybe people wouldn't try and screw me because, you know, I have a lot of resources. And um, 
I have a lot of opportunities for people and I can open doors. And for someone, a business owner, to rip me off 50,000 baht by, by not paying me the money he owed me, it closed lots of doors for him and then any future business went out the drain completely. So that 50,000 cost him a lot eventually. Number 23, um, be wary of guys promising silly returns. They're out of touch and they, and they haven't been doing business yet. That's pretty obvious. People use big returns to get greed to take over your emotions. If you're promised life-changing money that you'll never have to work again, a lot of people will give, give everything they've got to get that. Number 24, you need to go through every last detail, plan between partners. Um, one guy told me that his partner ripped him off and I said to him, okay, can you tell me? I have conversations with a lot of guys that think they've been unfairly treated and they go around town saying that their partner's ripped them off. And this guy says, well, when, when we set up a business, my partner said, um, I'm going to take out as much money as I need to survive. And what he didn't realise is that he meant 100,000 is what he needs to survive. And the other guy's like, no, you only need 30 to survive. And the other guy's like, no, I need 100 to survive. So then he said that he got ripped off, went round town telling everyone he got ripped off. And I just said, mate, that's your fault. You should have done um, uh, an agreement to saying who does what role, who gets paid what. If you're going to take money out for health, um, for hospital, you know, you, you've got to expect your partner to take money out too. You've got to have, um, you've got to have the expectations of how much salary you're going to take. You can't just start running your uh, family costs through the business. Um, if you're going to give yourself a bullshit salary and pay your wife the the overgoing rates. Like some people will, will employ their wife or someone else, and they'll, they'll pay them much more money than what you would pay normally. And that's not exactly fair. But if you sit down and talk about it first, then it's completely fine. There's always a problem later, and always there's always people arguing later. Twenty five. What if he dies? Will the business continue? If you're going to invest with someone that's drinking himself to death or he doesn't look after himself and you need to make sure that the business can continue because there's a lot of businesses out there where it's specific to a person being alive. If that person passes away, then the customers might go elsewhere. 20, um, 26. Does he have time to do the business or does he have to work for someone else? Now, some people are starting businesses on, on a shoestring and they have to they have to work a job elsewhere. If, you're, if you've got someone that's, that, that needs money from elsewhere, you need to discuss what they're doing, how much they're getting paid and how long they're going to they're gonna do it for. You don't want to invest in a business and, and, and someone is never there anymore. And sometimes they've got two businesses and they spend more time with that one too. 27, how much is his current living expenses? Um, you need to know how much money, how much pressure is he under? If he's under a lot of pressure from back home, then maybe he'll have to stop doing the business and, and go work a job where he gets paid more money faster. If he's got too, many, too much savings, maybe he's not gonna work as hard as, as hard as you want him to. If his expenses are very high and he's not getting money, then maybe he's going to steal it or do something else. Or maybe the investment scheme is the only business he's got. 28. How much profit is going to be reinvested? I always like to hear high numbers. Other people like to take money off the table. This depends on how old you are, um, what, what sort of growth strategy you have. I have massive long-term growth strategy. I'm always putting everything back in and a lot of other people say no you should take some off or take it all off 29 is the lease rock solid do they have a good location 30 check the market he's going to see if the pricing's right there's a lot of guys out there and they try and market by price i don't do things like that and i don't want to be dragged into that mess 31 make sure he's got a visa and check it you can't just ask we have guys applying for jobs and they've got no visa 
we always check because if you get caught with someone with no visa, you're in deep trouble. Also, they'll get blacklisted for five years. 32, does he listen to advice or criticism? Is he always right? If he's always right and he doesn't listen, then you're just gonna have complete nightmares. Um, 34, does he really love Pattaya or does he just want to shag girls all day? Um, you know, there's a lot of guys that come to Pattaya and they, they're they not in love with a place that much. Maybe they won't stay around long. Some guys are just here to shag a few girls and then disappear. I prefer guys that love Thailand for what it is. They they learn to read and write. They um, they love the people. They love everything about it. Well, within reason, you know, you've got to be realistic here. We have good and bad days. A lot of the stuff that people complain about Thailand is valid in our own countries. You know, people say that we're not welcome here, but do you really feel welcome by your government back at home? I don't. I don't think so. Um, 35, check his reputation around town to find if he owes money. That's a big warning sign. I know at least three or four guys that have had investors before and they've got, they had bad bills everywhere and they 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 owed money and all sorts. Um, you can look at their girlfriend's Facebook for gold and hanging off and, you know, expensive meals and all these things. I know this is a little bit anal, um, but but when you're in a, a town like this and someone's splashing out money, it, you know, it's not it's not businesses paying for that half the time, it's, it's investors. Yes, there is money to be made here, but only at a certain level. If someone's just started a business and they're splashing cash around, then it's investors' money. But that's what people like. You know, maybe if I drove a Bentley around and rang bells all the time, people would invest money, but then I would have to pocket that money to keep up with it which is how scammers work. So a lot of this can be applied across the world. Uh, yeah. 36, find out, out, find out exactly how much money is going to be spent on what, how much safety net is needed. A lot of guys um, run the bank slow and then the business cash flow stops. Um, try and get your name on the business, on the lease and the bank account. Try and be careful and check with a lawyer. There's loads of tricks out there. Now, um, I, I could probably do a, a video about how not to get scammed and things to look out for. I'd have to think of that. Um, we all have ideas, I have tons. We could all brainstorm all day and figure many things out. But it's not the idea, it's the execution and the timing. Um, I'm just, what I'm basically saying is that a lot of people have ideas and they they think that that's it if you ever do a business someone say well i had that idea you owe me it's not the ideas it's the execution and the hard work it's very difficult i never wrote this to um scare people off into vesting or invest with me i just feel like i need people to need to help people out there's no point being scared um to invest here there's lots of people willing to help out if you do um decide to do business here Lots of uh, business owners understand the struggles at the start and they're willing to help out. I think Bataille is a good, um, is, it, is an investable place. You just got to be careful. But you could probably put these videos out in London and other places and just replace the word for Bataille. I'm sure you can. It, it's just that I lived in Bataille for half of my adult life, um, half of my life now, uh, most of my adult life, yeah, so. So that list is very exhaustive and it's probably over the top, but it's all things to look at. It, it's not going to save you completely and some of the things might be a bit silly. I've got um, a private detective friend here and we do we do offer people with uh, certain services. There's a couple of guys around town that are offering investors um, percent and so not telling the partners and we've actually spent months researching it and uncovered a whole web of lies and deceit and um, and partners unaware of each other and it, there's been quite quite a few occasions over the years where um, investors have bumped into each other by accident in the same bars and, it, and it's all gone tits up 
So I've, I'm going to um, put this video onto the other one and I'm going to drive down Soy 6 and find a Wi-Fi somewhere and upload it. The thing about the moment is that all the bars are closed and the traffic's amazing and this is the time when I'm driving around. I drive in my car six hours a day in Bataya. It feels like I live in it. I've just been with um, Carl's Thailand at Prime Burger and now I'm going to go home and I'm back doing Muay Thai every day so I've got to get that in as well. Thank you for listening. Um, see you guys soon.